Uh, my name is Hen. I'm from Playbuzz. Uh, I'll try to do it as short as possible. Uh, I know it was a long day. Um, so, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a data architect at Playbuzz. Um, I was the first developer. I developed most of the service side of Playbuzz. Um, yes, and the guy that still uh, wakes up when shit hits the fan. Uh, and I'm leading the data slash dot not data uh, solution at Playbuzz. So a little bit about Playbuzz for uh, if someone didn't hear about, didn't hear about us. Uh, we're three years old. Uh, we sit not so far in uh, Beth Rubinstein and we're moving to Sarona in the next month or so. Uh, we have four locations, Israel, New York, London, Hamburg, and another small office in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, Nashville. Uh, 100 employees, and three of them are in the R&D, and yes, we're still small. Um, so a little bit about what is Playbuzz, I ran uh, too fast. So we're we try to change how the users uh, consume their content. So if you can see that a lot of that from uh, the, Wall Street, uh, the Wall Street Journal in 2014, uh, you stay only 15 seconds in a page, so we need to consume our, to give our users an option to consume all the content as fast as possible. So, uh, you know, just something uh, funny that I heard yesterday. Uh, my boss, Shaul, is the CEO of Playbuzz. Uh, he told us that he, someone interviewed him for, um, I, don't know, I think it was TechCrunch. Uh, it published yesterday. So he told me that he published the, it's Facebook in uh, 4 p.m. Yeah, 4 p.m. And by 4.05, um, he had almost 10, well, almost 1,000 likes. So no one could have read the whole article in five minutes. So is it like doesn't even mean I, I read it. So uh, for example, I'll send you an uh, article today and I'll say, this is the best article that you're going to read in the next year. I'm pretty sure that most of you won't open my mail because you think it's spam. Uh, but the one that will open it won't even read the first or second paragraph. So we see that 78% of the internet users don't read the entire articles. And we see that even a web publisher that get 60% of the traffic through a referral of Facebook or all the social networks. So this is something that we at Playbuzz want to change. So Playbuzz, as we describe it, is the king of engaging content. And what I mean by engaging content is try to give our users an option to consume as much as possible of the data. Or the, oh, the picture is not as sharp as I hope. Uh, but we, we want to give them all the data that, you, you sh that the content creator wanted to give them. I'll give an example. Uh, but one of our publishers, uh, we have an AOL who published uh, AOL or MTV. And if in the past the top 10 was a long list, so today you are showing them a, yeah, a small uh, image or a small video um, that helped uh, help them to see the top 10 in, uh, in short time. So we're, we're working with over 7,000 publishers. And as you say, publishers can be wrong. Uh, we have uh, a lot of them in, if you're talking about Israel. So most of the big publishers you know here, it's, it's Ynet, Walla, um, Kalkalist, Aretz, and as I said, MTV, AOL, Blaze, Cosmopolitan over here, and most of the big publishers uh, in US and uh, Germany too, uh, Build and so. Uh, so we really work with the biggest publishers to try and bring them to the 21st century or uh, how they call it with, with uh, the way that they can give their users the highly engaging content uh, as we offer. Uh, I'm try I'll try to show you some of our formats. You see the personal decrees, I believe that most of the most of people here saw like uh, at least one personality quiz of Playbuzz. Uh, it's like the last page of Mariv Lenoir from ten years ago. Uh, trivia lists uh, and so on. So if I'll try to do it as some kind of cliche and take like one company, uh, I don't. I'm not sure it was on Silicon Valley the show uh, when you try to take one uh, company and. Bring, it, uh, to bring your company idea to this company. So we're trying to be the YouTube of engaging content. In the matter of 
you will come and create, our, create your content in our platform, embed it into your site and give your users the full native experience um, with your content in our platform. So what is our secret sauce, as we call it, about the, let's drill down to, to the technical side. So how we do it? We have almost over, sorry, over uh, 500 million uh, session per month on 150 user, million, uh, million user per month. So we try to keep it simple and super slim. We always try to keep our production with as few, as few servers as possible. Today our production is at most five servers. Um, the second one is be lazy. Uh, I'm, as the first developer, and I'm lazy. So I kept most of the, uh, the code as lazy as possible. We pay a lot of in, in insert. We are warming the cache, we're warming and our database, our cache, our uh, Elasticsearch as a search engine, and uh, get should be as easy as possible, and know your traffic. Uh, as the last point says, we, we want to give our business guys, the business development, uh, the option to scale. For example, when our business guy uh, told me that uh, MTV is gonna publish something uh, later that day, didn't stress, stress me at all because I know that we can scale with minimal cost. So as I said, five, only five servers. So where can you find Redis? And this is the main curve. Uh, object caching. Um, production use, it's the, the first use that, uh, the first time that we used Redis was 18 months ago when we just published, we used Memcache and we moved all the objects from Memcache to Redis, uh, items as uh, objects, uh, strings as we call it, and then a newer uh, addition where we uh, manage all our lists as sorted sets. For example, if today we need the second page or the third page of an item, we have all the items scored in this list and we're uh, fetching all the, only the relevant page without fetching all the other items. And permissions, of course, is a trivial uh, implementation of hash maps. Uh, HTML output caching, this is something really nice that we implemented over the IAS model. Uh, we took the implementation of Microsoft for a distributed output cache and uh, implemented uh, on Redis with a smart purging mechanism that allow our users to save content and immediately see their changing on the site and uh, keep it in the cache for a few minutes. Uh, ETL session management and enrichment. Uh, Two parts, so for the first one is session parameters. All the session parameters are object uh, in our system. Uh, our big data system collects about uh, five billion events a month, so we need to enrich those events uh, in session parameters, as I said, and IP to location, which I will talk in uh, half, uh, one, like one or two minutes. Um, so we use Redis in a lot of our system as caching and as, as I said before, for being lazy to work as much as possible in the write and, and give the, our users our best, the best experience that we can in the read. Um, so I'll just go to the use case of IP to location. So what we, we had to do in this part, uh, we try to enrich over 150 million events uh, a day and as a con one, with uh, over 100,000 concurrent in uh, the simple one to IP to location. Take, give me your IP, I'll give you the location. Uh, it's uh, really important for uh, data services and for um, all that they use it for, uh, for um, personalization usage. Um, so we try to change our location object as hash maps. For example, uh, city equals, uh, city equals uh, country, state, uh, longitude, latitude. Uh, this is really simple to think about. And the other one is IP. So as the base idea of this implementation, we convert our IP uh, addresses to integers. So if it's, for example, the 10, 0, 0, 138, yes, uh, I'm using hot internet in my house. So um, we will multiply uh, the trivial uh, base conversion uh, function and we're getting this number. So now all we had to do is to find the right range the right the IP range, because uh, in the internet world, I'm pretty sure that you all know it, um, the IP are divided to uh, ISP, as the ISP, and the ISP gets a segment of IPs, a segment of uh, consecutive IPs, and by that we can um, decide, we, we can see what is the location. 
So we just run uh, Z-range by score, which is a um, Redis uh, function, and we find the rant range. How we do it? We pre-insert all the ranges by the upper, uh, by the lower and the upper bound, and then when I run, when I run uh, Z range by score, I'm getting the place that this IP should have got inserted in this list. So if I'm getting the third position, so I know the third uh, range in the IPs, sh the, the third range should be the uh, range that the, IP, that the IP is in. Uh, and edge get all, it's a simple uh, end for this to get uh, from the return position, I'll get uh, the location object. So the challenges that we had here, and this is something that you can uh, think about uh, if you're implementing a similar solution. IPv6 is the same idea, different multiplier, and a lot more. it was a lot harder. So if here we have like uh, top uh, two by 32, so you, um, Z range by score is uh, log M, and it, will, uh, it should end by at most 32, uh, about 32 uh, uh, operations, and here we have a lot larger uh, uh, scale and empty subnets. It's something that we didn't know about at first, but you can see that there are a lot of empty subnets that you can need to take care of. And if your IP is in, this, in one of those subnets, so there must be an error or your uh, table map isn't uh, updated. 